Hey there, on this week's episode of Golden Key Design, we're gonna take these doors from this to this. Stay tuned to see how I did it. closet door because it's the smallest and easiest to maneuver and we're going to start by removing both the doorknob and the hinges. Let's get to it. There we go. And we're all done. So this is referred to as a slab door because there is no jam and you're going to be reusing the jam that's already installed. I ordered this door from Home Depot because it was readily available, however with that it's going to most likely come with some defects, it's just kind of the case when you order from a big box store like that. However, I'm going to fix those later in the process when I'm prepping for paint. The next step is making sure that this door is the same size as that door, potentially trimming the top or bottom or even the sides if necessary. After measuring, I've realized that my new door is about a quarter inch too long, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark both sides of the door, connect them with a line, and then I'll cut it off with my circular saw. Let's get to it. As you can see, I put the door in place and this is to make sure that I cut it to the right height. I actually added about a quarter of an inch from the old door because the old door was a bit short on the ground and now this one fits a lot better. The width is perfect so I don't need to trim it there but you may need to if your door frame is a bit narrower. I was planning to use the old door to align the hinges for this new door, however I think it's actually a lot more accurate just to align them right here in place. As you can see, I put shims on the ground to make sure it's at the right height vertically and I'm just gonna push it up against these hinges and mark them with my pencil here. All right, now that we know that the door fits, we can go ahead and start cutting those hinges, which can be a bit nerve wracking as well as a bit tricky. So for that reason, I bought this Ryobi jig. It comes with a template guide, a router bit, and a VIX bit, which is self-centering. Uh, so it should make the process a lot easier and it comes with some tools that you might use in other projects too. So it's a pretty good kit, it has good reviews and it was relatively inexpensive. I'll link it down in the description as well. Let's get to cutting. See, I just put in the three hinges here, but I just put a screw in each on the door side just to make sure that everything is aligned and adjusted properly. I went to close it for the very first time, thinking everything was good, and it just barely hits the left edge of the door frame. So I didn't realize that the gap that the hinge creates on this side was a little bit bigger than I was expecting. So there's two options here. I can trim down this left side, however, that seems a little bit difficult and I'd like to leave the factory edge of it being nice and straight. So what I'm thinking about doing is just routering out these hinge slots a little bit deeper so that it insets the door a little bit more. And I have a fair amount of room to play with here, so I think that's the best option. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. All 
right, second time's the charm, right? Perfect fit. on the carpet there because it goes up near the tile, but I think it's fine. Well done. Now that we have all three doors installed, everything is adjusted properly, all the hinges are on, we can get to installing our doorknobs. And for that, we're gonna be using yet another Ryobi jig to make the process a little bit easier. Let's get to it. The first step is installing the strike plate. I then measured how far off the ground the strike plate was, and I made a mark here on the door so that it's perfectly centered in that strike plate, and I can just verify that by closing the door. Now that we have our mark on the door, we can go ahead and attach our jig. This jig works quite well, however, there are a couple things to take note of. You can adjust the position of your doorknob from two and three quarters to two and three eighths. I'm gonna be using two and three eighths for this application. And also, it can expand and contract to fit different door widths. Now, in order to attach the jig to the door, you're going to be using these two holes right here to drill into the side of the door. And these are actually the same two holes that you'll end up using to install your latch, so you're not drilling any extra holes. However, there is a caveat. I'm actually not going to be using screws to attach my latch, but instead it's going to be a friction fit, and therefore I don't want to drill through here, so I'm actually going to clamp this in place. I'm making sure to align this hole here so that it's perfectly centered with the line we made earlier. These two clamps are plenty strong to hold it in place. The next step is to drill our holes. We're going to start by drilling out the larger main hole, which is two and an eighth in diameter, and I'm going to be using the included drill bit. Let's get to it. Once the center drill bit gets through to the other side, you're going to want to switch sides. That way you don't have a bunch of blowout on the other side of the door. I now cut through like the first eighth inch of material on the other side, so we're gonna finish going from the original side. There we go. It's now time to drill the second hole on the side of the door for the latch. Now, according to the Ryobi jig, you are supposed to take off this larger hole saw and put on this smaller one. However, this is a common concern in the reviews of the product that it's basically impossible to take this off after drilling a hole because it basically tightens itself on there to the point where you can't unscrew it. That might be why they also include a one inch spade bit in the kit because they realized this problem but didn't really want to fix it so they just added a drill bit to it. I'm not a big fan of spade bits and luckily I have a one inch Forstner bit which I'll be using to cut this hole on the side. If you don't have this, you can use the spade bit, it just doesn't cut as clean of a hole. Let's get to drilling. Once you get the hole deep enough, you can take off the jig. It's a little bit easier without the jig in the way. After the holes are drilled, the next step is to install your latch. As I mentioned, I'm going to be using a screwless latch, so I put a little ring on here to create a friction fit in the door. I'm going to use a block and a mallet to hit it into position. Let's get to it. Now we just separate the handle into its two pieces, put it on either side of the door, and push them together. You just want to make sure that if this is a privacy door, that you put the lock on the inside of the room. And then you're all done.
Now that we have all three doors fitted properly and we made all the necessary adjustments, we can actually go ahead and take all three of them off to give them a fresh coat of paint. Let's get to it. I just went through and hand sanded any small imperfections in any of the doors and there's really only one larger perfection that sanding won't take out and that's right here in this door here there's just a bit of a divot I was able to clean up a little bit with the sanding pad but I'm going to use some Bondo to fill the rest and then I'll sand it back smooth. We now have two coats of paint on all three doors. This is the inside of the bathroom. It's actually gonna be white, but we haven't done the other side, so we're gonna go ahead and flip them all over. Let's get to it. All right, so to put it back on, first I need to determine which is the front of the door and which is the back of the door. And this is the back. No, this is the front. <laughs> this is the front. So now, bring it in place and pretend that it's open. And as you can see, I have some shims on the ground. What I'm gonna use those for is to shim it to the right height so that I can align these hinges so we'll put it in place it looks like we need to go down a little bit it's looking good so now we'll go ahead and screw it in with this being the first hinge I'm just putting the screws in lightly and then we're gonna align the other two before we tighten everything down Now that we have everything in, we can go ahead and start tightening it down. Now that everything's tightened, we can go ahead and take out these shims. And now the hinges will be in the same place as they were before, but they might ever so slightly be different. So I'm gonna go ahead and check to see if everything closes properly. And it does, so we're good there. Now we can reinstall our door latch and handle. Now I can see if it works. Very nice. Sweet. Hold on. I then repeated the process for the other two doors, and now let's take a look back at what the doors used to look like. They were perfectly functional, however the stained wood and the glossy gold knobs just didn't match the design aesthetic of the rest of the home, which is more modern industrial. So, it was time for a change. The new doors are sleek, design conscious, and not overpowering in the room, yet are cohesive with the rest of the home. For those who've been following along with the bathroom renovation series, here's what the inside now looks like. The new door is really nice, and I consider going black, but I think it looks better in white. And if you enjoyed the video, which I hope you did if you made it this far, I'd really appreciate it if you could smash that like button as it really helps the channel out. And if you haven't already, get subscribed as we post a new DIY video every single Saturday. And this is pretty much the last project in the bathroom, and we have a lot more projects left in this lake house renovation, so get subscribed and stay tuned. And as always, thanks for watching, and happy building. See you next week.